Hello students, today we will discuss about the anatomy of axillary nerve. Now this is an important short note for your exam and there are few related clinical anatomy question based on the axillary nerve. So that we will discuss at the end of this session. So what is axillary nerve? Now when you will see the axillary nerve, it is having a relation with the surgical neck of humerus. So when you will do the dissection on the posterior side of the surgical neck of humerus, you will have a winding course of this nerve. And that's why this nerve is also known as circumflex nerve. So this is one of the MCQ question for your exam, which nerve is known as circumflex nerve. So the name circumflex comes because it having a winding course or it runs around the surgical neck of humerus. The second thing is about the root value. So the root value is C5 and C6. The third question is that axillary nerve is a branch of so you know that brachial plexus enters into the axilla and then it will have the cords. You have the lateral cord, medial cord and posterior cord. Now this axillary nerve is a branch of the posterior cord and it is a thick branch. So it is a thick, stout, terminal branch of your posterior cord. You know that posterior cord is giving two major branches. One branch is your radial nerve and another branch is your axillary nerve. So here is this axillary nerve. So if you will see the relation of the radial nerve and the axillary nerve, what uh, you are able to understand that radial nerve is a medial placement and the axillary nerve is a lateral placement in the axilla. And they both are the branches of this common cord which is known as posterior cord. So this posterior cord is giving the axillary nerve which is going more laterally and the radial nerve which lies just medial to the axillary nerve. Clear? Now in this video clip, I try to explain the orientation of the axillary nerve. So here you can see that this is your medial cord. Now here you can see this is your lateral cord and this is your axillary artery. So the names of the cord are given with the reference of your axillary artery. So this cord lies medially, so this is medial cord. This cord lies laterally, so it is known as lateral cord. And here, now this is a cord which is visible behind. Now this cord is the posterior cord because it lies behind the axillary artery. So if you want to see the posterior cord in the dissection, you have to lift the axillary artery and then you are able to appreciate this part of your brachial plexus. So we have removed the medial cord, now we will remove the lateral cord so that our posterior cord become more prominent. Now in this posterior cord, here you can see that this is a nerve which is a lateral branch going towards the surgical neck of the humerus and this is your axillary nerve. And there is a one more nerve which is going straight and it is more medial as compared to the axillary nerve is your radial nerve. Clear? Now what is the course of axillary nerve? So you know that axillary nerve arises in the axilla and I have shown you that it will go posteriorly towards the surgical neck of humerus. So that area from which the, it disappears from the axilla enters into the posterior part is known as quadrangular space. So my dear students, we have the cores in axilla and then in the quadrangular space. So when you will have the cores in axilla, the nerve arises from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus and it is related behind the third part of axillary artery. Now my dear students, you have to keep this thing in mind that the name of the brachial plexus cords are given in relation to the second part of axillary artery. That means the lateral cord lies lateral to the second part of axillary artery, medial cord lies medial to the second part of axillary artery and posterior cord lies posterior to the second part of axillary artery. And as the cords will go downward, they will divide into the branches and the branches are in relation with the third part of axillary artery. So when you will see the branch, that means the axillary nerve. Now this axillary nerve is a branch of the posterior cord and it lies posterior or the uh, in the behind of the third part of axillary artery. So this is the origin of your axillary nerve. Now this axillary nerve, you can see that once it will take origin, it lies on the this muscle. Now what is this muscle? This muscle is subscapularis. So my dear students, this is an important concept to understand or you have this question sometimes in exam 
that which muscle form the bed which muscle form the bed for axillary nerve answer is subscapularis clear so it runs posterolateral to the third part of axillary artery on this muscle which is known as subscapularis so the subscapularis muscle you can see here it arises from the scapula going towards your humerus and the branches of the posterior cord are anterior to the subscapularis so my dear students this muscle is actually forming the bed for your axillary nerve now in these two diagram i try to explain this concept that this is your area where we don't have the muscle i have shown only the nerve and the bone now most of the students are having this confusion that these structure lies behind the subscapularis no they are lies superficial to the subscapularis subscapularis forming the bed for the branches which are arising from the brachial plexus clear so this is the important thing to understand that which muscle or you can say which structure form the bed for the origin of the posterior cord structures answer is subscapularis now what is the further course of the axillary now so my dear students as the axillary now descend downward now you have to understand that your humerus is on the lateral aspect of the axilla and we know that it is going to make a circumflex course around the surgical neck of the humerus so this now is taking origin and then it has to go laterally not medially so this now will go laterally and it is come on the posterior side so the answer is it will become posterolateral so that's why it leaves the axilla in which direction so the direction is posterolateral so axillary now leaves the axilla along the posterior wall and you know that posterior wall is again formed by this subscapularis and it curves it curves back on the lower border of subscapularis muscle so this is your lower border of subscapularis muscle and this is the now which is descending downward and here you can see that it is making this curve so now the important thing to understand that whenever you are reading the axillary now the axillary now first run on the subscapularis muscle and then it will reach up to the lower border of subscapularis and from the lower border it is taking turn now once it will taking a turn it enters into a space and this space is actually known as quadrangular space now when you will see this quadrangular space this space is having the four borders that's why it is known as quadrangular space now here in this space it is having a very important relation and that is posterior circumflex humeral artery so it is a very commonly asked question in your exam that what structures entered through the quadrangular space around the scapula so there are two structures one is the axillary now along with the posterior circumflex humeral artery so how it terminates then now when you will go on the posterior side the quadrangular in, through the quadrangular space axillary nerve divides into its two terminal branches anterior terminal branch and posterior branch clear so what is the important thing to understand that axillary nerve never comes on this anterior aspect of surgical neck of humerus because sometimes you have this question in exam that draw the relation of axillary nerve with surgical neck of humerus so suppose you are having the this dry human humerus in your hand i am having the humerus in my hand i am having a chalk and i have to draw the relation so i have to go on the posterior side of the neck only you should not draw the axillary now anteriorly because you have seen here that this axillary now enters in the posterior side and it will making a loop on the posterior side not on the anterior side of your humerus so what are the relations with the axillary now in axilla you have axillary artery anteriorly but obviously i already told you that the branches of posterior cord is behind the axillary artery that's why they are posterior cord posterior cord means posterior to axillary artery so anterior relation become this axillary artery posterior relation is the subscapularis i already told you this muscle form the bed for this your now then medially what is happening medially you have the radial nerve which i already explain you that radial nerve here which is a medial relation 
and this is your axillary now and laterally it is related with the humerus clear now what are the structures related in the quadrangular space so basically you should know the boundaries of quadrangular space so here if you will see the boundaries of quadrangular space you will have the four structures now superiorly you will have the subscapularis then inferiorly you will have the teres major then you will have laterally which is formed by the surgical neck of the humerus and medially you will have this long head of triceps clear so these are the four boundaries of quadrangular space which are the relations of the axillary nerve in your quadrangular space so in upper part here the important thing is the relation is subscapularis posteriorly axillary artery anteriorly and here the most important relation is the boundaries of quadrangular spaces now what are the branches of the axillary nerve so my dear students axillary nerve give three sets of the branch articular branch now you have to keep this thing in mind that there is only one joint which lies near to the axillary nerve and what is the joint is shoulder joint so it is going to supply the capsule of this joint so that is your articular branch then it is supplying the muscles which are around the shoulder that i will tell you and ultimately it is supplying the skin around the shoulder so it is giving three sets of the branches articular branch muscular branch and cutaneous branch so let's discuss these branches one by one so what is happening that while passing through the quadrangular space it gives its first branch now before terminating into the anterior and posterior division the trunk of axillary nerve is giving the branch to the shoulder joint and that is known as articular branch so this is a multiple choice question that which is the first branch of your axillary nerve answer is articular branch or supply to the shoulder joint so now in this image you can appreciate the circumflex cords of your axillary nerve now here you can see that this is the anterior aspect this is the bicipital groove of the humerus which is present anteriorly and here you can see that this is the circumflex cords of the axillary nerve now this is the main trunk clear now this is the main trunk and this trunk is giving the first branch now this first branch is going to supply your shoulder joint now it is going to divide into the two branches this is the anterior branch which is running along with the posterior surface of the neck of humerus and this is the posterior branch which is going towards your posterior border of deltoid so this is the important diagram for the understanding of the course of axillary now that when you will have the transverse section here and if you will see the orientation what you are able to understand that there are two arteries arising from the third part of axillary artery this is anterior circumflex and this is posterior circumflex humeral artery this posterior circumflex humeral artery going posteriorly along with the axillary now through the quadrangular space and then we, when they are reaching on the posterior side they are covered by this muscle is the deltoid now here this main trunk of your axillary now is giving the first branch which is your shoulder joint branch or articular branch now then it will divide into the anterior and posterior terminal ends of your axillary now now when you will see the anterior branch now this anterior branch accompanied by the posterior circumflex humeral vessels so now again this is the important thing or more specific question sometimes you have that posterior branch accompanied by the artery or the anterior branch so you can see that this is a branch of the artery which is making a anastomosis and this posterior branch is run running along with this anterior branch of your axillary now and the important thing is that it is supplying to the deltoid as well as some part of the skin over the antero inferior part of the deltoid so here you can see that this anterior branch is then supplying this anterior part of the deltoid here it is supplying the anterolateral areas plus there is a one cutaneous branch now this cutaneous branch pierces the whole thickness of the deltoid then it pierces the overlying fascia and come out on the surface and this branch is going to supply the skin and which part of the skin it is supply antero inferior so this is anterior and this is inferior so this area 
of your shoulder skin is supplied by the anterior branch of your axillary nerve. Now what happened with the posterior branch? Now there is a very typical question about the posterior branch and that is pseudoganglia. So posterior branch related with the posterior border of the deltoid. So this is the posterior border of the deltoid and this branch is approaches to the posterior border or the posterior end of your deltoid. And you know that behind this posterior border of the deltoid, you will have a small muscle and that is teres minor. So the teres minor muscle will come here. So teres minor comes behind the posterior border of the deltoid. So what will happen that the muscle of the posterior side that is teres minor is also supplied by the posterior branch of axillary nerve. But before supplying the teres minor, there is a, a small dilatation is seen and that small dilatation is known as pseudoganglia. So this is a very important multiple choice question for your exam. So pseudoganglia is present here. Now here you can see that this is a dilatation. Now this dilatation is known as pseudo because it is not a true dilatation. Generally, whenever we are talking about the ganglia, ganglia literal meaning means that suppose this is a nerve. Now if this nerve is having a dilatation in its course, most of the time this dilatation appears because of the presence of the head of neurons. And these neuronal heads collect in one part of the nerve. And these neuronal heads are giving the axons and their dendrites. Clear? And something is entering inside, they are making a synapse here. So these are the routinely placed ganglias in the nerves. And they are known as true ganglia. Or you can say they are the true dilatation in the nerve. Suppose I am having this dilatation in the nerve where I am having the collection of the neuronal head, then it is known as ganglia or true ganglia. But there is a nerve and in the course of the nerve, I am finding a dilatation. So this will give the appearance like a ganglia. But when you will cut this area and see under microscope, you will find that it is not containing any neuronal cell. It may be the collection of the fat cells or it may be a collection due to some other reason. So because it is this area is not having any neurons but it looks like the dilated ganglia, it is known as pseudo ganglia. So here also this is not a true ganglia because you don't have any nerve cell collection and this is the area where you will have this question that pseudo ganglia is present in which nerves. So one of the example is posterior branch of axillary nerve where you will have the supply to the teres minor. Now <clears throat> there is a one more important thing about the posterior branch. The posterior branch is having a very important cutaneous supply through a nerve and that is known as upper lateral cutaneous nerve of arm. Now here in this image you can see that this posterior branch is supplying the teres minor posterior part of the deltoid and the major portion of the nerve will come out and it will pierce again the deep fascia of your shoulder and enters into the skin and this branch is known as upper lateral cutaneous nerve of arm and this upper lateral cutaneous supply the lower half of the deltoid. The branch is upper cutaneous but it supply the lower half of deltoid area the skin over the lower half of deltoid muscle. So this is the important concept to always keep in mind because whenever you are having the Hilton's law. Now see this is again an important question for your exam that explain the Hilton's law with example. You have this question explain the Hilton's law with example. So what is the Hilton's law? Hilton's law says that in now, in now which is supplying a joint, you know, which is supplying a joint, also innervating the muscle acting on the joint and the skin over the joint. Clear? So what you are able to understand that there is a single nerve and this single nerve is supplying a joint. It is also supplying the muscle acting on the joint 
and the same nerve is supplying the skin over that muscle or the joint. So here, if you will see the axillary nerve, axillary nerve is supplying the shoulder joint, axillary nerve is supplying the muscle acting on the shoulder joint that is deltoid and it is supplying the skin over the shoulder joint or the muscle. Clear? Now, what is the importance of this nerve supply? So it thus over stretching of the inferior part of the shoulder capsule during the sudden over abduction is prevented by the reflex inhibition of the deltoid through the axillary nerve. So what is the meaning of this? That it, this is actually the protective reflex. It protects the damage of the inferior part of the capsule. So when you are having the gradual abduction, it is not going to harm your shoulder joint. But when you will have unknowing jerky abduction at the shoulder joint, when you will have the jerky uh, over stretching or the abduction at the shoulder joint, this nerve supply is having a very important role. How? That it avoid the over stretching by the inhibiting reflex. And this inhibiting reflex, which is actually stimulating your shoulder capsule receptors, and that receptors are helpful to inhibit the further contraction of your deltoid muscle. So you have to understand that the capsule receptors are very important and these receptors are able to inhibit the over abduction in the sudden jerky movement because the nerve supply of the capsule as well as the nerve supply of the muscle is common. That's why the unnecessary stimulation of the capsular receptor inhibit the muscle which is acting or preventing the damage to the capsule. So this is a important question for your exam that explain the Hilton's law with example. Now we'll move to the applied aspect of the axillary nerve. Now axillary nerve we have seen that it gives the three sets of the branches. One is the articular branch to the shoulder joint cutaneous branch to the area over the your muscle of uh, over the deltoid muscle and third it will give the muscular branches to the two muscle deltoid and teres minor. So what will happen if there is an injury to the axillary nerve? So injury or of axillary nerve could be occur due to the fracture of the neck of the surgical neck of humerus. It could be due to the dislocation of the shoulder joint. We know that the shoulder joint is having the superiorly placement of rotator cuff and you will have the acromion process. So that's why the tendency of the shoulder joint dislocation is more in the antero inferior direction. And we have seen that axillary nerve is related here in the quadrangular space. So whenever the dislocation will occur, it is going to damage your axillary nerve. And the very important clinical thing is intramuscular injection in upper part of deltoid. So if you will place the injection in upper part of the deltoid, what will happen? You have to keep in mind that there is a circumflex course of the nerve in upper part. So if you will have the deep intramuscular injection in upper part, you may again damage the your nerve. Clear? So because of these three most common causes, what is the effect occurs with the different movements at shoulder joint? So the first, the abduction. Now you know that abduction is initiated by supraspinatus and then it is taken over by the deltoid. So when there is an injury occurs or there is an involvement of the deltoid muscle, what will happen? The abduction is become very weak. So there is a very weak abduction or patient is not able to do the abduction from 15 to 90 degree due to the involvement of deltoid. The extension movement is also involved. Why? because there is a severe weakness occurs in the deltoid and teres minor. So we know that the posterior fibers of the deltoid and teres minor both are helpful in the extension at shoulder joint. Then there is an involvement of the lateral rotation. Now why a lateral rotation? Again, this is a function of the posterior fibers of the deltoid as well as teres minor. So because of these reasons, what will happen? that these three sets of your movements get affected in the axillary nerve injury. So this is again a question for your exam, which of the following movement will not affected in the injury of deltoid muscle. So my dear students, the adduction will never affect because deltoid is not an adductor and the medial rotation is also not affected because the pectoralis major is a very powerful medial rotator and there is a presence of your teres major, which is also a medial rotator. 
So what are the movements which are mainly become weak or affected? One is the abduction which is the first movement, then the extension at the shoulder joint and lateral rotation at the shoulder joint. So these three movements are having the affection in case of the axillary nerve injury. And there is a loss of the round contour of the shoulder. Now this roundness is also get involved because your muscle will get paralyzed. So that is also lost. Now there is a very important concept about the cutaneous supply of the area over the deltoid muscle. Now once the axillary nerve will get involved, what will happen? You will lose the sensation here. Now this area is resembled to the this army wedge area. Now if you will have the army person, you will realize that they are having a regiment batch at this place. In their uniform, they are having a their batch here. So this is known as regiment badge anesthesia because particularly in this area patient will have the loss of cutaneous sensation and this cutaneous sensation loss is very resemblant to the uh, this army badge area and that's why this is termed as a regimental badge sign or regimental badge anesthesia. So it is due to the loss of the sensation over the lower part of the skin which is covering the deltoid muscle. So <clears throat> now what type of the clinical question you will have in exam based on the axillary nerve injury. So a 10 year old boy was given an armpit crutch. Now see this armpit crutch may confuse you with the radial nerve injury because most of the time the this radial nerve injuries are also known as crutch palsies. But my dear students please read the question completely because Sometimes the very high improper crutch may compress the axillary nerve also in near the entry of quadrangular space. So it is not always the radial nerve, it could be the axillary nerve also. So it is a 10 year old boy which is having a armpit crutches to help him walk after the fracture of right femur. So that boy get the right femur fracture and for the walking he need the support and the support is provided by the axillary crutches. Now a few days later, later, he complained of the anesthesia and numbness and tingling over the outer part of the right shoulder. So you will realize that the skin here on the shoulder area is having the abnormal sensation. And the lateral side of the right upper arm and along with this right upper arm. So what is the most common involvement of the nerve? It could, oh, cannot be the radial nerve. Why cannot be the radial nerve? My dear students, Whenever you are having the radial nerve, you have to always keep this thing in mind that radial nerve supply always and always posterior aspect or dorsal aspect of your upper limb. So this is the important thing which is always related with the radial nerve. Suppose if there is involvement of the posterior aspect of the arm sensation or if there is involvement of the muscles of the posterior aspect of the forearm then always you will have the radial nerve because whenever the radial nerve question comes you have these two words in the question either the posterior or the dorsal aspect clear here we don't have these terms here you are having the term is outer part of the right shoulder and the lateral side of your upper this area. It is not showing the dorsal surface or the posterior surface because radial nerve classically supply the posterior part of the arm and the posterior part uh, in the forearm also. So what is the sensory innervation? So uh, sensory innervation is the axillary nerve. What nerve is likely to be compressed? Axillary nerve and what is the probable cause of the injury? Because of the compression of axillary nerve at the time of entry into the quadrangular space. Now in the same thing you will find in this MCQ that the upper lateral cutaneous nerve that is upper and lateral cutaneous nerve of the arm arises from. Again you have to understand that musculocutaneous nerve and median nerve never give any cutaneous branch in the arm. You will have the muscular branches from the musculocutaneous in the arm. You will have the median nerve which is not giving any branch in the arm. You have the branches from the axillary nerve basically which is supplying the upper and lateral cutaneous and again I am told, I am saying this that if you are thinking about the radial nerve, you always try to find out this word posterior or the dorsal aspect. 
But again, you will find this is not here. It is upper and lateral. It is not posterior. It is not dorsal. So if I am having a word posterior or the dorsal aspect, then your mind should go towards the radial. If you don't have these words, then don't think about the radial. So only answer is axillary no. Clear? So at the end of this session, what you are able to understand that axillary nerve is known as circumflex nerve. Axillary nerve basically supplies the two major muscles, deltoid and the teres minor. Teres minor supplied by the pseudoganglia. And the important thing is that axillary nerve injuries, that means in case of the higher crutches or in case of the uh, uh, dislocation of your humerus, there may be the involvement of axillary nerve injury and it will lead to the palsy of the muscles. So this is all about this session. Thank you.